Yesterday we left out this question with three x minus. Let me just zoom in on it. So let's just get this done first, and then we'll go to the part of the paper where you're allowed to do. Um, you're allowed to use your calculator. If three x minus y is equal to tell what is the value of eight x over two y. Now this is an indices question. This is like a hidden indices question. So what you're looking for here? What what is the giveaway? Is that it is really two to the power of an integer, right? Uh, two to the power of a number. Well, why are you looking at that? Yes, because you're seeing three x minus y here, and uh, you should be able to determine that this is two to the power of three. That's eight. Two to the power of three all to the power of x, right? Because 8 is really 2 to the power of 3, and this is 2 to the power of y. So this may be a challenging question for a CXE student. For an maths and pure maths student, it shouldn't be that bad. 2 to the power of 3x, this will be, according to the a power to a power, just means multiply. So 3x like that. And this is 2 to the power of y. Bless up, everybody. And when you're di dividing same base in indices, this is really, this is really 2 to the power of 3x minus y. So if this is 2 to the power of 3x minus y, and we know that 3x minus y is really 12, this is really 2 to the power of 12. So that's the key to figuring out these kind of questions. You're rearranging either this side or that side to resemble it. Obviously, it starts with the indices side. This is more complicated. And see if you can get something to resemble. Some people may have picked this answer D, but that would be wrong, right? So what we're going to do today um, is the calculate. Right after this is the grading section, uh, um, one, two, three, four, five questions, and then we go into the calculator section where you have one to 30 to solve using multiple choice and then 31 to 38 is grading. So we're gonna try and get 30 questions done tonight from SAT exams. Exam is on December the 4th. So let me see what we can do here. This is practice test one, this is good stuff. The practice they just tune up for the exam right excellent john runs at different speeds at part of his training you get lots of graphs in SAT, like interpretation of graphs on which interval is the target heart rate strictly increasing then strictly decreasing which interval i see the increase decrease all right so you had to pick from these options between zero and 30 minutes no between 40 and 60 yes between 40 and 60 is strictly increasing and strictly decreasing so this is a simple question to get started why is in the chat if you all understand that? Anybody here tonight? I seem to the eight people on the live already. Press Y mean yes in the chat if you're going good so far. You all doing SATs, SAT people here. Tomorrow we will be starting at eight o'clock. Um, maybe I'll do a crash course Sunday or something. In the figure above, lines L and M are parallel, and lines S and T are also parallel. If the measure of angle one is thirty-five, what is the measure of angle two? So this is 35. This run really easy. This is, what is this? 145. And according to your corresponding angles theory, this would be 140. This is a breather because the angle two is the only obtuse angle. That one was for everybody. That one was for everybody. That one was for the, some of these questions will be remarkably simple. I mean, like you said, double check it and make sure I know tricks now. <laughs> if Y is equal to K, is equal to K, then Y is 24. So this is, this is from CXC. This is um actually directly proportional. They're talking about here. This is like that variation. Or y equal to mx plus c where c is equal to zero. And y is 24 and x is 6. So you find out what k is and then you have to substitute. So we're going we're going simple so far, real simple stuff. So 24 is equal to kx. X is 6. Why did I write x? I should have write um I should I write 6? And k would be 24 over 6. Six now, which is which sets k at four, right? So if k is four, what is the value of y, y when uh, x is five? You notice I didn't write k this time, I write four because I just write over the equation, replace k, replace x, y must be 20, three marks. You can do that in your mind, I just write it out so uh, anybody could follow it, right? I'm trying not to leave out any questions today. If 16 plus four is 10, more than 14. What is the value of 8x? If 16 plus 4x is 10 more than 14. Now, can I even remember doing this question ever before? And I know I do some of these practice tests with my class. Like, I can't remember this level of simplicity here. <laughs> if 16 plus 4x 
is 10 more than 14. That song into primary school, isn't What is the value of 8x? Okay, fine. So 4x is equal to 24 minus 16, which is 8. That is 4x. 4 times x is equal. So 2 times 4x is really 8x. So then I need to multiply this by 2 as well. So you get, you get 16 there. 8x is 16. Hmm. Tell you some of these questions. I just feel kind of... Aha, uh -huh, we catch him with something really simple here and then it's still not to have a little trick in it. So if I do accidentally make a mistake in any of these questions, I will I will write it in the comments. <laughs> Which are the following graphs best show a strong negative association between B and T? This is negative, it's not strong. This is just flat. This is positive. This is a strong one, D. So the first five questions here was cake and ice cream. Cake and ice cream. One decagram is that 1,000 milligrams. <laughs> they want us to overthink it. Yeah, I like this is this is SAT maths. Good practice for any math student, actually. One decagram is 10 grams. 1,000 milligrams is equal to one grams. One gram. Fine. A hospital stores one type of medicine in two decagram containers. Based on the information given in the box, we know how many one milligram doses are there in one decagram container. Two decagram container. Two decagrams. Two decas would be 20 grams. And since one gram is 1,000 milligram, 20 grams is 20,000 of them. The first six questions are radically easy. Unless I not see in some kind of something. Yeah, that, that one is for the people. Like, there's give little questions for the people and thing out here, but yeah, lyrics. I see you say D, big up you. Like, what they're trying to do us in this year. The number of rooftops with solar panel in this installation in five cities is, is shown in the graph above. If the total number of installations is this, what is the appropriate label for the vertex axis of the graph? Tens, nah, that can never be tens. Hundreds, 900, plus 500, plus 600. Nah, thousands. Number of insulation in thousands. If this was 9,000 plus 5,000 plus 6,000, five, and yeah, this looks like it could come up to 27,000. Let me just check and think. 9, 14, 20, 27, 500, exactly, yes, yeah, so. The first seven questions in this paper was really easy. Javish, what do you think about this? Where is he seen? What do you think about this SAT paper where he practiced one? For what value of n is the modulus of n minus 1 plus 1 equal to 0? What value of n? This, this is one way you want to plug in the answer. Plug in the answer, Peter. Plug in the answer. So n minus 1 plus 1 is equal to 0. Which one could work? 0 if I put 0 here. Nah, if I put 1 here. No, if I put 2 here. If I put 0 here, I will get the modulus of negative 1 plus 1 is equal to 0. This is 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. So 2 is not equal to 0. Any number you put in here will get positive. You would never be able to get like a subtraction out of it. So there's no such value of n. There's no such value of n. Yeah, brother. Big up. Big up. Um, yeah, boy, Javish. So far, the, eight, the first eight questions was, was cake and ice cream. Uh, so let's check this one. The speed of sound of a sound wave in air depends on the air temperature. Okay. The formula above shows the relationship between A, the speed of the sound wave. So this is the speed. And this is the air temperature in Fahrenheit. And this is speed in feet per second. Well, in the Caribbean, we don't really deal up in Fahrenheit and feet per second and all kind of thing. But fortunately, you don't need to know any conversions or anything in SAT. Um, which are the following expresses the air temperature in terms of... So this is our rearranging. We want T in terms of A minus this divided by that. A minus this minus eh? Minus. So E me. The first nine questions was cake and ice cream. All right, what, what if I'm about these first nine questions? 
kind of suspiciously easy, right? And which of the following air temperatures will the speed of sound wave be closest to 1,000 feet per second? Okay, so you could use a calculator in this one. So what I'm going to do is just take one of these and throw it in here and see which one will give you the closest uh, 1,000. So you had, you had speed through this in your calculator, 1052 plus 1 1.08 brackets and maybe put the middle one for is negative 49. Well, that's not really middle, but you catch what I'm saying. This real close to that was 999.08. I'm going to check the 8. Uh, 0 0.08. This one close, actually. So it, um, I think B is the answer. So just checking if you know close from top or bottom. This one go further away. So the 8 is the best. This one only 12 away from 1,000. Well, point, no, sorry, point 0.16 away from 1,000. When I do 49, it's actually it's actually 0.92 away from a thousand. So B is the answer. I hope you all understand that. I hope you all understand that. That's good. Which are the following numbers? Those of you all who just touched them, don't forget to touch the like button too. Which are the following? If you don't see any like button, you might have to close the live chat, press like, and then open up your live chat. Which are the following numbers is not a solution of the inequality. Well, not a solution of the inequality. Well, let me solve the inequality. If we bring across the 4x, we'll get 3x minus 4x. And if I bring across the, the 5, right, I'll get positive 5. Like, this is how we know to do it in the Caribbean here. So this is 2, this is negative x or negative 1x. And you need to switch this around. Because you need to find the solution for x, not for negative x. So this is like x. And if you multiply by negative 1, the rule with inequalities is that the sign switches. So x is a number that is below or equal to negative 2. So something suspicious going on here. Should be following is not a solution. Or not a solution. I was looking for solutions. So this is a solution. This is a solution. This is a solution. This one is not a solution. Excellent. The first this was probably the first kind of toughish question this is probably the first toughest question now keep in mind those of y'all who just doing c-sec or form three or form one not really for you but you can watch it and get better this is sat maths this is more equivalent to someone who did pretty decent in c-sec maths and have a knowledge of ad maths decent in ad maths those who do pure maths unit one excellent for sats Excellent. So if you don't know what is SAT, you can look it up, SAT exam by the college board. Um, a lot of students do this if they want to study in a university away. Number of seeds and in Trinidad, we have the exam ever so often. The exam actually comes like six times a year or so. We are oh, in the student hub. Where, that's the school I teach at the online school. We do it. We focus on the June exams and on the December exams. So we have cycles for that. Based on the histogram above of the following, which is the closest to the average arithmetic mean number of seeds for apple, number of seeds in each of 12 apples, right? So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Right, so the 12 apples are counted for. And we want the mean number. Um, Three, two apples had three seeds. The mean, mean, middle, right? So, right, 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 right. We could we could use the calculator and multiply it out to make sure. Now. Two apples had three seeds. Um, four apples had five seeds. This is how we do this one. So, this is the number times the frequency. Fx, I remember, do you know? One, two, three, four. Um, four apples had five seeds. Uh, one apple had six seeds. Um, two apples had seven seeds. And uh, what was this? Three apples had nine seeds. So this is six plus 20 plus six plus 14 plus 27. Well, when you add up that, what you get? What you get when you add up that? Um, you get 53 or so. 
Is it 53 that you get? Two apples had three seeds, five apples had four seeds, one had six, seven had two, nine had three, six, 20. This is the number of seeds, um, 53, yeah? As the principal of the student of well, yeah, you can call me the principal of the student of. How much is it to write the SAT exam? You can look it up online. You can look it up online. You can see the sign up. Everything is done online. Kubin, social, Insta, YouTube, and TikTok. Yeah, that's I'm on all of those things. So you all understand what we're doing here. We, we multiply the number of apples with the number of seeds that each um each group of them have. There are five apples with four seeds, and then you add it up. That will give you all your total number of seeds, and you divide by twelve to get like your average. So let me see. This is this is six and six twenty six. Nah, it's not um no six and twenty six twenty six plus twenty seven is fifty three plus twenty. Is this is this seventy three actually? Is this seventy three, Alega? And if you all. So what the three divided by divided by what? Twelve apples. Twelve six is that seventy two. So this is the closest. This is the closest. Twelve. So six makes sense. And then again, you could have probably see this. You could have probably see this by just kind of balancing off the two. This one has an extra one here, but it has less there. So like you could think of that falling there. Uh, you would have get the close. Yeah, six, six, six makes sense. Just watching to see which one is in the middle. Although median and mean is not the same thing, but just kind of averaging it. Thinking of it like I don't know if any of you all do physics, but like you're balancing um, the moments. Yeah. Anyhow, so that's the answer. A group of ten grade students uh, responded to the survey that asked which math course they were currently enrolled in. The survey data was broken down as shown. This is the course. This is male, female, total, gender, bap, 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 algebra one, geometry, algebra two. Which of the following categories account for 19% of all the survey? All right. So we actually need to watch the answers and see which one they're talking about. So this is this is like probability percentage, that kind of thing. Females taking geometry. So there are 150 females, 53 over 150 is a third or so. So that out. That's not that would never be 19%. Females taking algebra. It's how they say females. <laughs> females, males. That's kind of it. Females taking algebra two. 62 out of 150. So this is wrong again. Males taking geometry. 44 out of 160 is close to 20%. Is it? Males taking algebra one, males taking geometry. So geometry is 59, algebra one is 44. So yeah, on the calculator, you really want to just what, check what 44 divided by 160 is. 160, that looking like that would be closest to, to 19. Oh my gosh, I am wrong. Zero, well, approximately 19% of all the survey respondents. I did not, I stopped here. I didn't realize that. I didn't read this part. Good thing I didn't have an answer waiting for me there of all the silver respondents. So females taking geometry. So I thought it was females out of geometry. This is literally, they're looking for 19% of 310. So the best thing to do is find out what is 19% of 310. So 0.19 times the total now, all the silver respondents times 310 as 58 so males taking geometry is the answer wow what an interesting question actually it was an easy question just make sure and read the whole question people it's not unusual in these SAT questions that they give you the whole graph and you only use like this line in the graph that's not unusual so i just stopped reading here but you should read the whole thing now 19 percent of the survey respondents 59 out of 310 is 19 percent so um length of fishes the table above lists the lengths to the nearest inch of random set of 
uh, 21 brown bullhead fish, the outlier measurement of 24 inches is an error. Of the mean, median, and range of the values listed, which will change the most if the 24 inch measurement is removed from the data. This is a toughie here. All right, they start, they're going to the bigger questions here, more thinking involved. So which one changes the most? The range, which will change the most. The range, I don't know if they'll all change by the same amount. We kind of need to check and see. The range will drop drastically because the range will go from 20, the highest being 24 to the highest being 16. That means the range dropped by 10. I'm sorry, did I say 10? I meant 8. So it's, yeah, it's probably the range, KM, very, very likely probably the range. The median, the middle value is this one because they all are range in order. And if I take out this, the med median will be here. So this is wrong. They didn't all change by the same amount. So far, range is looking good. Median is not looking good. Mean. I could guarantee the mean and going and change by 8. Which of the following will change the most? The mean will change, right? It will change, but not by eight. The mean has getting divided by all, so it kind of is not going to change by eight. Samantha, where's the win? I didn't even realize spring's live. <laughs> so the answer is the range. Does SAT repeat C, like C cycle or something? Because I think I did these questions before. SAT never repeats. Nah, them not, not repeating things. See, see, I alone is be repeating the multiple choice. Them not just not repeating things, but 15 and 6, but they repeat the style. So, like, the same vibe question, doing plenty practice questions like this. The graph above displays the total cost C in dollars of renting a boat for 8 hours. So, they might ask about this thing here. They like to ask about that. Nah. What does this C intercept, you see? C is that line there, or the y-intercept represents the initial cost of renting a boat. Yes, that's something you get the total number of boats rented, the total number of hours the boat is rented. The increase, as soon as they start to talk about rate, that's more gradient. So the initial cost of renting a boat is, what is that, $7? No, between four and, between four and six is five, sorry. $5. And so you pay five, what kind of cheap? Cheap boat is <laughs> so you pay five dollars to rent the boat, and then it the cost going up every hour. Every hour it's going up at three dollars, three dollars, three dollars. Niceness, niceness. Number 16, based off of this as well. Which are the following relationships? So it going up by three every hour. It start off at five with the five. So see, looking at the best bet, let me just verify that. It went up one, and here went up one, two, three. You understand that's how gradient works. So this number has to be three as the gradient. Five is the y-intercept. Cooking with Ramco gas. Y is equal to mx plus cc is equal to three h plus five. The complete graph of the if Ramco gas is begin once the advertisement on my channel. <laughs> uh, the function f. So there's some function f. Uh, for what value of x is the value of f of x at its minimum? Oh, what is the value of x where this is occurring? If this is 1, this is 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. They're starting to go back into the easies here, boy. They're starting to go back in the easies. So I'll take all them random questions and then when we finish, we're nearly done. Um, in the xy plane, if 0, 0 is a solution to the system of inequalities above, which of the following relationships between A and B must be true? Zero, zero is a solution. This is tough. <laughs> Just watching the question, I find this looking kind of... Can you give us advice on finishing SBAs? I'll talk about that after. Yeah, you could buy the SBA bank as well. Those of you all who are interested, like in classes, anything student hub, maybe you want to experience the best lessons in the world, in the Caribbean. <laughs> This is the number to WhatsApp. And uh, maths for CSEC, keep anything, anything we do in the Caribbean, we have lessons for, including this SAT as well. Um, if you want to see that number again, it's in the description. I think I write it in the description. Majority following relationship between A and B must be true. 
Hmm. And zero, zero is a solution. Zero, 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 zero. Is it that A is equal to negative B? <clears throat> so zero, zero is a solution. So maybe, maybe, maybe we, sh we could line up the two. You see, negative x plus a. This is greater than y. Uh, this is less than, this is greater than y, and this one is less than y. So it means this side must be less than that side, right? Just thinking logically about it. Because this, this one is less than y, but this one is greater than y. And... Um, zero, zero is a solution. So let me verify this. If I had zero, zero, I, I would have, I would have that B is less than A. B is less than A or A is more than B. A is more than B. Let's verify. So zero, zero, zero is more than A. And zero, 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 zero is less than a and zero is b is b a is above zero and b is under zero. Yeah, so this this correct, this correct. This correct. So like if I put zero, zero in there, you're, you're sort out each one, you end up with zero. That making sense, tell you. A song they like a talking sense day. So that kind of logical question. This will go to zero, this will go to zero. Because zero, zero is a solution, and this is the x, this is the y. So zero is less than a and zero is more than b. So so read this the other way around. Reading it the other way around, you had to swap now. You had to say a is more than zero, but b is less than zero. So which means b had to be under. B have to be under a. B is less than a. But let me just check out these. A is equal to negative b. We can't see that for sure. A and B could be any number. Like this could be three, this could be three, and this could probably be negative four. So nah, it's not D, it's not this. It's this is the opposite. This is the opposite. This is the opposite. So it's not this. So A is the best answer here. Niceness. Niceness and more niceness. Number 19, a food truck. This looking simultaneous equation. Let's show something. Sell salads for six. And drinks for that, the food truck revenue from selling a total of 209 salads and drink in one day. How many salads were sold that day? This is simultaneous equation. So let me call this one X. Let me call this one Y. 6.50 by X plus $2 by Y is eight, $836.50. And you're only thinking is D. Adrian, you're thinking is D. And the number X plus Y must be equal to 209. 209. Um, yeah, I, I just form any equation here. I just read any comments. So somebody saying is B. Hmm, I don't know why it is. So yeah, you could work out a simultaneous equation straight up on your calculator and figure out things in it. You can literally press mode um, five, one, if you're really feeling to go through all of that simultaneous, gen, gen jet, 0 0.5, 2, literally put in your coefficients, 836.5, um, 1, 1, 209, bang, bang, x is 93. B is the answer. So big up a few, Mohammed. Now, if you, if you don't know how to do this here, then multiply this by 2. So you can multiply this equation by 2. So you end up with 2x plus 2y equal, what, uh, 418. And you subtract, you end up with 4.5. You subtract this from this. You divide the whole eliminating process. But I would advise just doing this with your calculator fast because it's time is of essence. If you want to know how to do it, like a sharp calculator, after write it down after this video is finished we're gonna finish just now look up cool spring and sharp simultaneous equations and i went through how to solve simultaneous equations quickly in your sharp calculator as well and let me keep it rolling we have like 10 more questions in this multiple choice um, calculator section 
Alma bought a laptop at a store that gave 20% discount of its original price. The total amount she paid the cashier was P dollars, including an 8% sales tax and the discounted price. What was the what is the charge following represents the original? You understand what's going on here, boy? Um, she bought a laptop, 20% discount, so 0 0.8 of the original price the total amount she paid the cash was p dollars so p dollars is equal to 0 0.8 of the original price you understand what happens 0 0.8 i take off the 20 percent take off the 20 percent and um ronaldo write our question now i'll do it back in the end then 0 0.8 by the original price this is how much she paid the cash she paid the cash she, the among the total amount she paid to the cash was p dollars including an eight percent sales tax on the discounted price so she paid this plus her eight percent so how you put eight percent included there by um how do that way i'll put that she paid 1.08 of this because she had to pay eight percent of the of this soul yeah here this is always do this in SAT. This is always create these kind of questions in SAT. And what are, which of the following represents the original price? So I'll have to divide the P by the 1.08 as well as the 0 0.8. So D is the answer. Afira is saying A is not A. D is the answer. So let me just explain this again. Which of the following represents the original price of the computer in terms of P? Cool. So she paid 20% of the original this original price. So I write that as 80%. 80% is 0 0.8. 80 over 10, 100, 0 0.8. And then what where did it? She had to pay an 8% on this. 8%. 8% is eight over a hundred but she had to pay an additional so she had to pay the original the one plus the 0 0.8 so i multiply by this and now i just make original the subject of the formula here by bringing across you understand this will come underneath this will come underneath as well and i'll end up with i'll end up with d i'll end up with d that's lovely this is a question you want to take a look at this comes in sat all the time like this percent 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 percentage increase is something that they bring pretty intense in SAT, that kind of percentage increase idea. And that's from a SEA vibe. Yeah? This is a SEA vibe. Dreams, SEA is the primary school exam in Trinidad. Dreams recall during one week, group X, group Y, none, one to four, five or more, total, total. I kind of understand everything. I really went to just read this. If a person is chosen at random from those, so this is the probability thing. Again, you might get two of these in the paper on, in December. Those of you all who just touched on your, your heart, you know you have your SAT exams in December the 4th, like a press like and thing. I'll do the next one tomorrow. Tomorrow, please, God, at 8 p.m. About there, I'll be doing the grading questions from this paper. If a person is chosen at random from those who recall at least one dream, at least one dream, so exclude these people and everybody else. What is the probability that the person belongs to group Y? Hmm. Hmm. A message from the dark side. So somebody who recalls at least one dream, what is the probability that they come from this group? Hmm. Interesting. Well, there are 200 people in the survey in all. If a person is chosen at random, what is the probability, right? So there were 200 people chosen in all. So we want to we want to subtract these numbers because these not allowed in this. Because if a person is chosen at random from those who recall at least one dream. So we're going to subtract that. And then what is the probability that they come out of this 11 and 28? Yeah. So it's really all these numbers, 11 and, 11 and 68 plus already seen that this is the answer because 15 21 and 36 adds up to give me what some some somebody do this um 
some kind of four or something. I don't know. 15, 15, 21. Maybe, maybe C is not the answer. Eh? Maybe I would jump into the gun. 15, 21, and 36. 72. So that from that is one. Hmm. This question is interesting. Maybe I'm getting it wrong. Five or more. No, I I didn't I didn't need the 36. The 36 is not part. This is a total. So just 15 and 21. Yeah, so C, C is the answer. C looking like the answer. Yeah, C. 15 and 21, 36 from that 164. Boom. And you're dividing over this total here. So this is a total. So uh, it was actually an easy question. So the answer is C. How you get all again? The only again your answer is wrong, so by so they want the number of people in group Y divided by all those who had one dream or more. Total number of people who had at least one dream is 39 plus 125, which is 164. And the number of people from group Y is 11 plus 68, which is 79. As simple as that. Don't let that question waste your time. Wait, look at this big thing. The table above lists the annual budget in thousands of dollars for each six different for each of six different state programs in Kansas, boy. Anybody from Kansas? <laughs> from 2007 to 2010. Boom, bam, bang, bang. Mm -hmm. Where the big set of money going? Just in government, general government. Hey, they, they doing that same thing by little Trinidad. <laughs> uh, which of the following this approximates the average rate of change in the annual budget for agriculture natural resources? in two to th from 2008 uh, so the annual rate of change so it's going up by something all right so let me go 2008 to, two, to 2010 2008 to 2010 what are we watching agriculture so from this to this so it does what you like the average increase um the best thing to do would probably go from this to this and divide by two so you just you're, you're just really put the two of them subtract and divide by two right so four eight eight one zero six eight i'm somewhere in mode here mode mode one four eight eight one zero six minus three five eight seven zero eight equals divide that by two 64 64 so this is the this is the closest are you finding it sad uh, i don't find it that hard the annual rate of change well, then again as a math teacher well if you remember if you're doing c sec if you're not going to do c sec yeah it might be hard but if you're in pure maths unit one it shouldn't be hard for you the table above lists the annual budget in thousand it's just to get you state and if you want to get you state and you want to do the exam the sat exam as i said send me a message plus one eight six eight Four eight four seven two. Let me just now let me make sure I write on the right number here. Four seven two four two two one. And we will hook you up with the classes. The next the next the next session of classes starting in January, bright and early. Number twenty-three of the following which programs ratio of its two thousand and seven budgets to twenty ten budget is closest. The human resources programs ratio of its 2007 budget to 2010 budget. Okay, so HR human resource budget 2007 2010. That's some real whack questions. Right? So the ratio here to me, this is like six and this is like four. So this is like six over four, right? I'm looking for something that looking six over four ish six over four ish this is like 17 over 14 or more like 18 over 14 like six over four mm. this is the same this is three over two not real close education is close this is this is like five or four now nah. this one here now nah. five or four i just kind of averaging um this is like oof, this one is like let me say five over three of or, or 46 over 26. so the best the closest one to the six over four is like three over two this is like three 
And this is in thousands of dollars. Eh? So this is 3 million times that thousand. So this is really 3 billion, right? Um, so why divide it by two? Because I subtracted from here to there and I wanted to get the annual increase. Let me see. So you find this, the average rate in the annual budget. Average rate in the annual. So they mean per year. Look, they are literally half per year here. So I divide by two because two years pass there. By the way, education is the answer for this one. This is the closest to the rate ratio. Okay, we altered them grafting. Which are the following is an equation of a circle in the xi plane with the center is zero. So this is all of these good. Uh, four. So I expect negative four. So this good, this good. And a radius with the end point. Damn. So if we have the radius, the, we need to find the distance between that and that. Okay. So the distance would be, yeah, yeah, subtract. You understand? I have to find distance, right? I, I could do this in my mind, but I just want to write this here for the people who... Normally, we just write x first. I don't know why I write y first. x2 minus x1 to be squared plus y2 minus y2. And it's Pythagoras term. So I'm seeing like the difference between there is four thirds to be squared. And then when I take the, because four thirds minus zero is four thirds. When I take the five from the four, I'll get one plus one squared. So I'm getting, by the way, the radius is the square of this, right? So I could kind of remove the square root already, but let me keep going. So this is like 16 over nine plus one. Uh, so this is like 16 over nine plus nine over nine. I already seen that this, answer is looking real good to me 16 over 9 plus 9 over 9 is 25 over 9 so this check all the boxes here this is r squared this is r so r is the square root of 25 over 9 so now this what i just do here speed through a lot of circle theory here so you need to know circles and i can't teach circles right now on this there's a, that's like a whole two hour lesson so you need to know what formula is the equation of a circle, standard form, and general form. That's what um, a circle, uh, the equation of a circle, where A and B is the center and R is the radius. Katrina is a bot botanist, 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 studying the production of pears by two types of pear trees. She knows that type A, type B, Produces 20% more pears than type B. Based on Katrina's observation, if type A if trees produce 144 pears, this produces 20% more. So it is like 1.2 of whatever this is, type, type B. How many pairs? So 20% um, more. So 144 divided by 1.2. 120. 120. You could sit down and brainstorm that question too. How was that for y'all? Y'all you all, you all understand that? So I get it 1.2. Once again, anytime they give you a percentage in SATs, you want to immediately think of it as the percentage increase kind of thing. So 20% more. 20% more pairs than type A. Type B is 120 percent of what you um of the of the type b trees and 120 percent is 120 over 100 which is 1.2 so you want to always think in these kind of decimals to form a little flat equation and take more wood on it always think like this for these percentage questions for SDs. let me do 25 the equation above nearly finish expresses the approximate age in meters of a ball blah 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 so this is a this is a quadratic that's looking like this. Um, right? H, H is the height going up. T is the time. H here, T there, right, right, right. Um, after it launched vertically upwards from the ground with an initial velocity of 25. What? After approximately how many seconds will the ball hit the ground? So they were the roots. They were the roots. And the first root was a giveaway. The first root is zero. And they want to know what is this root here. They want to know that t. And now sometimes there's actually about the um, maximum or minimum point, whatever. There's a maximum. 
But in other words, to find the root here, that would be rather, that would be remarkably easy. That should be remarkably easy to find the root here. So H is equal to, you factorize all the T, and then you get negative 4.9T plus 25. Yeah, boy. So um, this must be equated to zero. Is either T equal zero or this part here equal zero. This is T, right? So negative 4.9t is equal to negative 25. Divide negative 25 by 4.9. Where are you going to get away? Um, like, like 25 divided by 5. We get 5. 5 is the closest, right? After approximately how many 5 seconds, right? I don't even need to, I don't even need to calculate that 25 divided by 4.9 um, is 5.1. The closest is 5. Moving on, a square field measures 10 meters by 10 meters. 10 students each mark off a randomly selected region on the field. Each region is a square and has side, is, and has side lengths of one meter and no two regions overlap. The students count the earthworms contained in the... Yes, this is a fact. So the questions can be easy but the since the time since the time con the time constraint is there part of the exam is seeing how quickly you think it's out and a little bit how fast you can get through the arithmetic as well mm. which is where the practice comes in and when you're practicing it you need to practice with a clock you always practice your sat with a clock and you clock him and you start <laughs> clock him out <laughs> always so um, the student come the rooms containing the soil to a depth of five centimeters beneath, and yes, hate these long questions because it take up your time. Ten by ten. Ten students each mark off a randomly selected region of the field. Each region is a square and has the size length one meter, right? And no two regions overlap, right? The students come the rooms containing the soil to a depth of five centimeters. Good. We need the earth's. The results are shown. So these are the students, A, B, C, D, F, G, right? Which of the following is reasonable approximation of the number of woodworms to the depth of, this is only one question on this, all this information, and you only use one, you can I give you some more questions, to a depth of five centimeters beneath the ground surface in the entire field. Oh, um, which are you follow is a reasonable approximation. Of, oh, so do one put the mean of all of that there. Now. They want to know how much it comes in all. So think of it. Is that is already have like the plot for the answer, but I need to explain it here. So this is like a 10 by 10 field. You know how much you know how much individual squares it will have in a 10 by 10 screen field. You know how much it will ha have. It will have 100 one by ones. That making sense? It'll have 100 one by ones. But then when you do 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So since they only do 10, whatever number we get when you add up all of this, we need to multiply that by 10. And that will be the thing. But the mean of all of this looking like 150. So I would say when I add up all of this, I will get one. I will get about that. And then I multiply that by 10 again, and I will get that. So my answer is this. Is that it? Is that cool with you all? Or you can live with this? That's how much earthworms it really have inside here. Afira, that making sense? So do, 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 the, the number of woodworms them getting 10 plots adding up to about 1,500, but there's actually 100 plots, so zero, an additional zero. Last three questions for the night. Tomorrow, please go and come back 8 p.m., and we're going to do the, the grading questions from practice paper one. The first part and the second part. If the system of inequalities, y is greater than 2x plus 1, and this is graphed onto the XI plane above, which quadrant contains no solution? 
of this is an excellent question whoever think of of this question you need to give yourself some props and the system of inequalities so where's the line right equal 2x plus 1 this is a line passing through 1 and with a gradient of like 2 right so a line like this and you want where y is greater so it will be above All right so i'll just shade that region let me get a different color and y is greater than half x minus one so minus one will pass through here and half x meaning it going up a little slower We're going up a little slower here and that is there that's that region there okay which quadrant contains no solution to the system so the system is this and this you only notice that word and so the overlap must occur in this region here there are no solutions in the fourth there's nothing happening in the fourth contains no solution in the quadrant four this is linear programming and SAT. They do bring linear programming. Linear programming is when you do the shading part with the um with the inequalities now. And SATs, they, they have the little clever way of bringing it like this one. So that's this is this is probably the cl most clever. Here the most most clever award question here in the paper number 28. I think I came around this question earlier this year and I post or something. So you all good? 520 AM in India. Wow. If this system of inequalities, y is greater than or equal to this and that. Yeah. Where where it contains no solution to so the system. The solution could only occur where the two overlap. Now. So four is the answer. Great like cheese, why? So y is equal to x squared minus 2x minus 15. Great. They draw the whole graph of yes. Which are the following is equivalent, is an equivalent form of the equation of the graph shown in the x, y plane above, from which the coordinates of the vertex A can be identified as constants in the equation. Well, that kind of there's a dead giveaway. We're looking for anything that have one and negative 15. In, in it, well, it's not negative 15, and it's negative 16. Change my mind, it's a little underneath. All right, <laughs> excuse me. So this is the answer. This is completing the square, and when you complete the square, you can always pull out your, your, um, you rearrange this, you get one, and then you take this, your h and k, remember, a, x, this is coming cxc all the time, plus h to b squared plus k. Would hey and that was it that was it so we'll we'll be back and we'll do the grading questions and the grading questions in set you actually need to shade in your answer let me say your answer is 201 201 you can shade it like that or what do you say or you could even shade it like this um 201 understand they just showing you how to shade certain things. Two over three, it put two, and they have a slash here, the vincular, however, it's called this line over three. 0 0.6666, point six 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 six. All of these are different ways you can you could put the same answer in, or you'd write seven twelve, so you'd write two point five. So they give you a little setup. Don't go and do no stupidness in this. And when you're doing the grading questions, you'll never get a negative non answer. No question has a negative answer. So, we'll be back to look at these few questions tomorrow at 8. And we also have to look at the grading questions from the no calculator section. There's about five of them. We look at those. Have some fun. See you at 8 o'clock. Um, press like on it. Don't forget to study. After we do that, we come in, in the following day and we'll do practice paper too, maybe. Just continue and go through all these practice paper. <laughs> All again, all again, I'm not going to see what's going on in the chat right now. All again, a little too ooh, technical in that chat, day boy. Um, any other questions before I bust out? You're not seeing 
that same thing in school, bless up, Mohammed. <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah, bless up by Williams, boy. So we obviously we come and chew with some CSEC and SEA, the usual thing that's be on this channel next year. But you know, we get the SAT people, we show them a little love. Later, people. <laughs> 